We all have a purpose in life. Some of us might not know what particularly that purpose may be or if we truly even have one, but we do. Some of us in certain cases are so sure about our purpose, we can't picture life without it. We can't imagine one day without the comfort of it because it feels like, like, like we're drowning in our own idleness. That guy playing the violin, he was my best friend, Samson. Sam, for short. He's one of those guys who knew what he was made of and didn't spend a minute of his day without it. Every fiber of his being stemmed from his passion for music. So why is it that those of us in life who are sure should so effortlessly give in to death when our passion is taken away? Sam, what are you doing in here? Why aren't you in the practice room? Um, they're full, but I'm um, writing a symphony. Want to help? I'd love to, dude. We got a meeting with Ashley, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Speaking of meetings, I hear Claudia's crazy about you. Why not give her a chance? She's crazy, period, man. Uh, I got my music. That's all I'll ever need. Whatever, dude. I'll see you in the rehearsal in like 30. All right. Make me listen to this crap, dude. Are you at least you gotta do the face? You gotta do the face. Do the face. Do the face. Oh, you look like such a tar, dude. Dude, watch out! What's going to happen? Is he gonna be alright? He's gonna be fine. It's just. See, when he hit the windshield, he hit it with his back, and he only broke a few ribs. But when he hit the floor and the car ran over his arm, he suffered from what we call radial nerve dysfunction. Now, in most cases, when the radial nerve is traumatized or torn, runs throughout the arm, there is rehabilitative treatment possible. But in this case, your friend completely severed it. I don't understand. His left arm is completely paralyzed. Well, what you're trying to tell me is that the damage is permanent. There's nothing else we can do for him. I'm sorry. It was it was like as if someone reached inside my soul and just sucked it out and said selfishly, "I'm gonna take your ability to express yourself, and you're not getting it back." I'm a mute, Melvin! I'm a goddamn mute! Sam. Listen, Sam, I understand I don't know what you're going through. Let me help you. And I'm your best friend. Let me help you. Sam. Sam. Melvin, first, let me say I'm sorry. I know it's selfish of me. I know that maybe this wasn't the best way to say goodbye, but it was the easiest. I want you to know that I never doubted your friendship or your value as a friend. I know you cared, and I know you wanted to make things better. I know you wanted to help me through the pain and make me forget, but the truth is simple. I was never going to recover. No amount of physical or psychological therapy would have ever brought back the ability for me to express. I would have never been the same. You have other things you love. Ashley, poetry, singing. I had nothing else I loved more than that damn violin. It was my oxygen tank. I carried that thing around because I needed it to live and when I didn't have it anymore, without it I felt crippled and helpless and suffocated. I couldn't stand thinking that I'd have to leave each day in silence. Complete silence. I, I finished writing that last symphony and I want you to have it. You'll find it on my desk with another letter. That one is for my family. Please give it to my parents when you can. It has in it what I want you to have of mine and, and detail where to find me. Goodbye, Mel. Your best friend, Sam.